back to the show, everyone. In the last episode, New Jack unfortunately passed away. I was replaced by this freaking thing. Thank you, Kalo, for uh, suggesting I get Avril Lavigne's Let Go CD. It apparently produces this crazy son of a bitch. So, in the last episode, we got him, but we haven't done our first training schedule, which we are doing now. We still need to put him in... We Damn, Loza. That's the way to play, buddy. We still need to... Is that Ukami? He slaps himself with his ears? My god, he's fucking weird. Anyway. So, we still need to... God damn, he even had a two focus and still did it. What the hell was I talking about? God, Heckhound's entire animation cycle makes me just forget entire trains of thought. Um, so yeah, in the last- oh, we need to get him into some battle eventually, just to see- did I pronounce that we word weird, eventually? Uh, to see where he stands and what his numbers are, however, we will have to do that at a later time, once he- gets a little- oh, that's Shadow Box. Anyway, once his bonding goes up a little bit more. Everyone else is doing pretty good, though. Yeah, I, I, I like the weeks where I don't have to micromanage. Okay, Heckhound's accuracy went up 88%, and he only gained a 7, which means his max on that is probably 9, so he's not gaining that much accuracy. So we're going to try to get him up to at least 10 and go from there. I have a feeling those dog creatures are big on defense rather than offense. He'll probably gain life and maybe even power really easily. So we'll, we'll go from there. Alright, so Aerith can nap, or Aerith rather can nap next week, and Lubu have an energy bar, because you've got a match tonight. Well, hopefully more than one. So we are kind of in autopilot mode again, and looking at the numbers here, um, our oldest monster is now Lubu, and he's still in life stage four, so we'll be working with these five for quite a while longer before we see any more. And once Lubu passes away, we'll start breeding to fill his spot, unless someone else out there has a particular CD you want me to research and get, let me know in the comments. I had a few of you actually requesting that I get an old PlayStation 1 or 2 game called Ape Escape, and there's a special gorilla-type monster or something. Kind of weird, but I might look into that too. Although, you know, like I said in a previous episode, I actually don't want to do too many more monsters from scratch because the Generation 1 monsters are what's slowing us down more than anything else at this point. And I've got to get Lubu's power up. His accuracy is decent, but his power is sadly lacking. Hmm. I think from now on, because especially with all the great advice you guys have been giving me in the comments. I think when a monster is in life stage four, I'll still let them work on machines. I'll just have to be careful and rest them more often. But it seems that they develop pretty well. They don't seem to have any life problems, lifespan problems, um, too badly using those machines, as long as I'm careful and I don't overdo it. That's not bad deal. Man, the dragons hit hard, and Lubu was able to take that without a problem. Dang, boy. Living up to your namesake. Alright, you can guard all day, but guess what? Here's a finger to the face. And here's a... Yes, great. Great, 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 great. And another finger to the face. And now you're down. I love this game, and as I've said before, it's one of my favorite games of all time, but also, as I've said before, there I, I, I can't ignore the... Um, I can't ignore the flaws in it, and I really wish the battles were a bit more streamlined. It looks cool, it's fun to play, but man, the loading screens and the slowness of the animation sometimes. The plotting pace just makes me tired. 
Wow, when I can 90% a hair, that means accuracy is fine. I'm in fact going to terminate his goal. I had his goal at accuracy 30. I think he's only at up, up to accuracy 28, but it's good enough. It's time to move on with Lubu. Get his power up a little bit more. His defense is solid. And really, he doesn't even need defense as long as I've got power and accuracy. I can just go balls out with offense, as I prefer. It will work very well. And in case I sound distracted, I had uh, some personal issues between episodes that I had to uh, work through. And that's as much as I'm going to say there. Nothing bad. Don't worry, guys. Nothing changes here, and I am in good shape. But uh, my mood has sort of declined a little bit. And it's... Uh, so I know that's going to come out in my voice. I'm not quite as up as I was. It also doesn't help that, like I said, I started this recording session friggin' like six hours ago at this point, and I, I've only been able to record three episodes due to allergy attacks and other bullshit, but we should be good the rest of the night. Not that it affects you, because like I said, I'm going to try to do eight episodes regardless, and you guys will see them over the course of the next eight days total. I think it'll be, what, four days after? I don't know talking about i'm just scratching for things to talk about good job lubu way to play all right we will check his power number once we are back at the ranch and figure out damn i think the fame numbers are a little skewed because it's so easy to hit a hundred so easy almost too easy it's weird you would Ah, I don't know. Whatever. All right, let's check Lubu's numbers. Okay, Lubu's power is at 25. Let's just make it... Let's just give him no power goal. We'll just work on power until we r decide that it's just not happening well enough. And since he's only at life stage 4, we'll start with the machines. We'll let him do the sandbag and see how well he does it. Okay, Loza needs to work on his power. Aerith needs to work on resting right now. And Ryu's working on his defense for only a bit. I'm probably incorrectly... Let's see how that is. Okay, so... Damn, Heckhound. But see, look at that. Heckhound had a 100% success rate, but still only got 8 points. I mean, accuracy is just not his thing. I'm going to try to get him up to level 10 just so I have something to work with, but then we'll have to switch him to something else. Um, Lubu did all right. A power of 12, even at a 70%, that's not below my standard. My standard is 70, so he, he was right there at the bottom of the line, but he made it. And Ryu, 82% at an 8 point, which means at 100% it'd probably be either a very low 10 or a very high 9, depending on how the game wants to round it. So he should be able to hit level 10 defense, okay. So everyone's basically on the right track, but it does confirm my fear that I've got them training on things that they really shouldn't be training on, but they kinda need to, so. They're just gonna have to deal with it. Hey, you can't be a professional athlete without some hard work, right, Loza? Have a beef. That's your reward for being awesome and exercising. Wait, who 100 percented? Oh, it was Heckhound who 100%ed. Yeah, praise. Praise anybody who hits 100% for sure. Who's a good Heckhound? Who's a good Heckhound? Ugh. Gross. Alright, let's see. You need a squid. I hope I'm not overfeeding them. I haven't checked their uh, weight classes in a while. So, someone might be getting a little pudgy somewhere. Especially Aerith, since her top four are all diabetes-inducing foods. Have a melon. Eat a little healthier right now, Aerith. <laughs> At least she likes melons. Um, let's check. Let's check. Uh, everybody's... Okay, normal. Fat. Not surprised. Chubby. Normal. Normal. All right, we don't... Oh, Lubu's normal? We had him fat, so he's cut some weight. Hmm. 
And Hackhound can be fattened up, but we'll just deal with him as normal. So we need some vitamins for Aerith. And probably for Loza as well, because I want to make sure they're speedy since they don't have very much life. Or defense, for that matter. So making them chubby is going to be counterproductive. Do I have... Uh, do I have vitamins? And if I do, how many? I think I bought a whole thing, didn't I? I thought I bought a whole 99. Well, yeah, 83. Okay, good. All right, so we'll put them on diets for a little while. All right. In good shape. Good shape. Okay. Schedule. Ukami. Uh... You're at five focus and you're lively. What? Definitely not resting you again. Do a uh, meditation some more, Aerith. And you're good. And you're good. And you're good. All right. Have at it. Praise Loza. Scold Lubu. Loza's doing very well over there. I have a feeling Lubu's just... Because he's old, he's not quite getting the numbers he should be, but what I was worried about was that their performance on the machines would be absolutely crappy, but he's right around the line, and he's tired, so I don't mind it so much. I'm going to stick with this. So Life Stage 1 and Life Stage 5, I will not put them on machines, but all other Life Stages, they will be, they will be on machines. Yeah, drink some gas. Good job, Lobo. You're a real man. I'll put hair on your chest. And probably kill you, but still. Whoa. Did you just see Dingle kind of freak out there? That was a little nerve wracking. All right. Ah. <sighs> The game is so much more relaxing when I don't have to... Son of a bitch. Well, I guess it's not going to be much longer. I, I should probably take advantage of that. <laughs> uh, we should probably go um, adventure with Heckhound and use Lubu as a bodyguard. And, uh... Damn it. I don't want to do that, though. I've done enough adventures for the day. Maybe I'll do it off camera. I'll figure something out. Or maybe I just won't care. We'll see We'll see how it goes. Hey, when we had Diao Chan, she was fine with her first two moves. That got her through literally the entire... Uh, uh, her entire career, so fuck it. I didn't even see their numbers. I don't know if someone should have been praised or scolded. I was completely not paying attention to the numbers. All right. You need to rest. You're fine. You're fine. You're fine. And you're just exercising now, buddy. Okay, scold right you. Everyone else is fine. Okay, fine. Have a vitamin. Wow, third lowest. He's gonna hate this. Swallow it, Loza. Hey, I don't... Loza, I, I can't help it, buddy. You gotta slim down a little bit. Can't help it. Same with you, Aerith. Aerith. Why do I keep... I keep... Even though I've already seen how to properly pronounce it... And even though my brain wants to say Aerith, that was adorable. I keep saying it. It doesn't. It probably doesn't matter. I don't know. Names are weird. Like, the Akamura is really sensitive about her name. And I mean her real name, not the Akamura. But anyway, I think for me, I've never minded it so much. Um, like... My last name, my real last name is Habib, and I think I've talked about this on the show. I don't know if, uh, what? Hi. Have I got anything else to this? I don't think so. Your phone hasn't gone off. Um. 
So my last name is Habib, and being here in the Midwest, I've had people just butcher my name. Um, the the most common one is Habib. Like they, you see the B I B, and you think it's Bib, not Beeb. But whatever. Um, I don't know even know if I used to care, but I certainly don't care now. Like it's just. Whatever. It's, you want to call me Habib, it's... Because, I don't know. F I mean, if... Like, the Akamura's point is that if you intentionally mispronounce a name, then it's a lack of respect, and I understand that. Like, if, if, if I were to say, you know, my name is Habib, and you continually insist on calling me Habib, I can see where that would annoy me. Because it'd be like, you are intentionally not wanting to, you know, respect my wishes here with my pronunciation. Um, and I remember when I applied to Walmart and got the job there, uh, they initially spelled my first name J-O-H-N. And it's not spelled that way. It's spelled without the H because my name is short for Jonathan. Um, and... I told her, you know, there's no H in my name, in my first name. And she's like, well, that's how you spelled it on the application. I'm like... No, it's not. And I, I was less upset that she had misspelled it than the fact that she had immediately blamed me, or at least insisted to me that I was the one who had misspelled it, and therefore it was my fault. Um, but she actually pulled the HR person actually pulled out my uh, pulled out my application to double check the spelling of my name and she's like oh you did spell a j-o-n and then she fixed my badge it's just weird it's weird and i don't know i i have a feeling that we grow attached to our names because it is something uniquely personal just like our style just like our thoughts you know because anyone can sort of bitch and moan about opinions but when you have a name or a style, I mean, that's you. You have personally chosen that thing, or especially with names, you usually don't have a choice. It is the thing that marks you as an individual, especially in the war in this world where, uh, you know, we as individuals are constantly shuttered to the side and just grouped into demographics and political groups or whatever groups, any kind of group, you know. So, you, you know, you're dear to your name, and you want it you want people to get it right because it's you. But for me personally, I've just come to this point where I'm like, just fucking whatever. And, and that even extends to my screen names. Like, um, the official way to screen to spell my screen name is with a capital F, Pyro Falcon, capital P, capital F, and one word. Um, but I've had people misspell it. I've had people not intercap it. I've had people all lowercase it. I've had people, I don't know, do a bunch of weird shit. I like Pyro Flacken. I make that typo a lot, too. And just, I'm to the point where it doesn't even bother me anymore. I just don't care. As long as we all know who we're talking about, then that's all that matters. Like, if you're talking to me personally, I could give a shit less if you accidentally type my name wrong or whatever. Because at least I know that you are talking to me. A name by any other name, or a rose by any other name kind of thing. Um, that's why, like, even in comments... Uh, you know, you guys can address me as John or Pyro or Habib or Michael or whatever. Um, one of my, uh, a, a very dear fan and it calls me Mr. Michael, which is interesting. I've never been called that before, but eh, whatever. It works and makes her happy and I don't mind it. So it works for everybody. Uh, I should be okay. So, I don't know. Names are funky. Where are the, oh, we were talking about Aerith. That's how the whole thing kicked off. So... Um, I don't know. I guess that's kind of the cool thing about screen names, though, that you can really pick it, uh, you know, even as an adult, and you can just do whatever you want with it. So, you know, you can, depending on what you want to do, you can just sidestep all of that misspelling bullshit, because you can pick something very ordinary. Or something. And rant, because I'm also ending the episode. <laughs> smooth uh so next week we're gonna have a battle with Aerith, i believe is next week or is that this week 
No, it's Lubu next week. Okay, so Lubu's going to get into a tournament next week, and we'll keep going with him and the others. So as always, thanks for watching, everyone, and I will see you tomorrow. For a... No okay, Aerith is now life stage two. Thanks for watching, and I will see you tomorrow for another episode.